Hi, this is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle. We're going to work on a reel today that a lot of folks wanted to see as a result of one of the previews that I did on upcoming videos. This is a Jarvis Walker reel. It's a uh, Ultra Power 7500 long cast reel. And uh, this one does not show the product of Penn. So I'm going to think that this is after Penn had owned this uh, company. This company uh, was popular in Australia, and um, then Penn got it, and it was called the Jarvis Walker, a Penn International brand. And then Penn sold that to a company called Bimini Products, which at one point owned uh, Tsunami Reels. So a little lineage there in terms of uh, where these reels have been. And I think that this one, well, I would guess, made in China, and... Uh, made by or for Bimini products. Well, we got a couple of things going here. We got a kind of a spool that's just kind of rolling around here. I'm not sure if that's because of bad drags or what that is. Probably the drags, it looks like. And um, we're going to take this whole reel apart. We'll show you how it's made and how uh, you can service it if you have one. And if you're thinking of buying one, well, the reels are a little bit older. They're, they're probably about 10 years, 12 years old now, maybe. Uh, but if you find one in the market and you're thinking about it, well, this is a 7500 series. It's a large reel. This one's got a lot of dirt and issues with it, but we'll clean that up. We'll get it going and we'll give it a second chance. Well, if you're interested in seeing these kinds of videos on a regular basis, please subscribe to my channel. And if you do subscribe to my channel, please use that notification button. That notification button will tell you when I'm posting videos, which is very frequently. And uh, you'll get a choice, chance to see all the reels I'm working on. You're basically looking at uh, and about all of the reels that come into my shop. And you're getting an over-the-shoulder view of, uh, well, what I'm doing in order to keep these reels fishing again. Well, what I'm doing here is I'm going to take a little bit of rod and reel cleaner. It's got a lot of UV damage on this one. And you can't fix UV damage. But you can clean up the stuff on the reel and do your best uh, cosmetically with that. You can uh, see that there was some rust on the pivot point here in the channel. It kind of tells you it's made with a steel spike. And well, you've got to take care of that, otherwise it, uh, it'll lose itself here. And uh, well, you won't be able to collapse the handle. Not the biggest problem in fishing reels, but uh, one that if you can avoid it, you want to do that. All right, with the handle removed, then we're going to look at the case. And we notice that there's a seam on the case right here. Well, if that seam wasn't there, you would have to remove your rotor first. But this has a seam, which means that the side plate can come off independent of the rotor. Well, because this thing is spinning and halfway off already, we'll take that off. We're going to notice that this reel has got a lot of dirt in it. So that always begs the question, well, what's caused it? Was it dunks? or was it just poorly cared for, or uh, how was it used, and so on. The reel itself was an entry-priced reel. I'm going to guess we're going to find a single ball bearing in this one when we do. And that doesn't mean that the people who buy entry-point reels don't service the reels. But a lot of times, these reels are almost viewed as disposable, because the cost of the reel and the cost of the service are about equal. <laughs> after a while. Doesn't mean you can't do it yourself. And well, that's what uh, that's what Second Chance Taco is all about, teaching you how to do it so you can keep your reels fishing for years to come. All right, well, we've cleaned up a lot of the dirt that was inside that, uh, that spool there. And I think if I just take that little pad with the rod and reel cleaner, you're going to see this spool. It's going to shine up nicely. It's an aluminum spool. It still has a lot of the shine left on it. We're going to try and clean up the top end. And we'll come back and we'll service this drag stack here. Oh, we can do it right now. Why not? Change change up a little bit. I normally do that at the end. Eh, we can do it here. Pull the clip. The clip rides in a channel. It's a uh, pentagon shaped one, five sided. Underneath there, we're going to have the drag washers. And typical of a, uh, of a reel like this. We have Teflon washers in there, and there's nothing wrong with a Teflon washer. I was thinking that maybe we have a washer underneath there. 
Um, Teflon washers are self-lubricating. They provide plenty of surface area for drag and, uh, well, the minimum maintenance requirement. On this size reel, you typically will find either Teflon or you'll find felt. It's a little bit less expensive. And uh, that's what one of the compromises that manufacturers will often make when uh, trying to keep the price point low at a fishing reel. I'm doing this right now. I started putting it in a stack, and one of the folks in the comment section said, Could you lay out the, the washers before you put them in a the stack so that I have a better indication of what the drag stack will be. So let's do that. You're going to start with a round washer. Then you're going to go with a keyed washer. Use that one for fun. Then you're going to go with another one of the drag washers. Then you're going to go with the eared washer which has the two points. Last of the Teflon washers and then you finish with a keyed washer. So these two are the same. The odd one goes in the middle. Uh, let's go ahead and put them in now. So it's Teflon, keyed, Teflon. The round one with the points goes in the slots in the spool, the one on each side. Last of the Teflon washers. And what's important here is that you clean those off. If you have dirt or debris in there, well, the pressure that's exerted on that washer is going to be lessened because it's only really going to focus on the high points. And when it does lessen, you'll have a poor performing drag washer. All right, I'm just working it so that the points on that retaining clip are in the, in the grooves, just like that. And that's the only purpose of that. So if that spring went shooting off somewhere, you lost it, you don't have to worry terribly. It, it's The only thing it's going to do is, well, if you, when the next time you take your reel off, those drag washers may fall out. But uh, that's one of the more expendable parts if you're uh, worried about that. All right, I'm just going to put that off to the side. When I take my pieces and parts off on this reel now, they go into a parts tray. My parts tray is a bottom of a fast food container. These should just pull up, just like that. The red washers on the top, that's to adjust the spool height so that you have even line lay. The one on the bottom here is a click washer, or a click ratchet. That is going to intersect with this little tongue right down there. And when your drag is operating, this thing is going to click back and forth. And that's the click uh, mechanism behind it. All right. We have a hold fast screw here. Let's go ahead and take that off. That's going to go into my parts tray. And I believe that's probably going to be a big, probably a four, 14 millimeter. I'm going to take a deep socket because I prefer to use those. I'm going to drive this so that it goes all the way down so I have better reach. Put the deep socket on. Now in this one, you don't have much of a lip, so you probably can get away with using a flat Uh, wrench, but I, I just by the habit I've been using the, the deep sockets here. That one comes off in a reverse threaded motion. You saw that I started to try and take that off by uh, unscrewing it in the traditional sense, and then that came off. Uh, it tight, actually tightened it up, so we went back and turned it the other way and found out that's where it goes. You don't do much on braille service if your bail is working. Just get a little bit of penetrating oil into the seams just to clear that up. A little bit on the roller. That's all you need to do. Work it back and forth just to make sure that it's working fine. Which is what it's doing here. Work it in. And that's all you need to do. Let's pull up on the rotor then. And we're going to see on this one, it's an older design on the, um, on the reel. So we do have an anti-reverse override. It's controlled by this switch here. If you push up, you'll have clearance that this dog can flip back. This is an eccentric driven dog. 
So as you're turning your wheel, you're going to be fine. As you back pedal, it's going to pull the beak in. You can see how it pulls that beak in right here. It's going to pull that in, and that's how you will stop your reel in free spool. We can remove this whole assembly here. We'll take that up. And pull that up. Take a picture here because you want to know what the top of this is. That's the top. Here's our single ball bearing. Here's our dog assembly. And now we can go ahead and take that case off because we want to pull your axle shaft, pull your pinion gear, and service the bottom part of this reel. So, so much of the fishing reel service is simply a process. And if you kind of master the process, generally speaking, you can do, well, almost any of the fishing reels like this. There's a whole host of these out there. They're not very complicated reels. Like, as I said, they're usually a value-priced reel, a little bit less expensive. And you can see where the compromises are made. They're made in the single ball bearing. This doesn't have an anti instant anti-reverse. Uh, the case is not a uh, uh, higher level material case, but uh, it's effective. All right, the three screws are out. We should be able to get this case off now. And clean case. Notice we have a bushing, not a bearing. If you really wanted to hot rod the reel, you could replace that bearing with a uh, bushing with a bearing. Let's bring this down now. I wanted to get to the screw, which is going to enable me to remove the axle shaft. That's a cross rind block that that is nested in. And so this has a rather, rather traditional cross rind block driven by a gear on the back of the main gear. Remove the screw and then pull up to remove the shaft. If you feel any resistance when you're pulling that shaft up, there could be a possibility that that shaft is bent. If that shaft is bent, well, you kind of had luck. Generally speaking, the only way to uh, service that is to uh, remove and replace. With the axle shaft out of the way, we should be able to remove the main gear now. And you can see we're, we're dead dry on this one. That's why it wasn't performing very well. You can also notice the metals in this. I'm not a metallurgist by any stretch of the imagination, but I know this is not uh, the higher priced, higher value kind of metals. I'm just going to grab the stud on the cross wind block. And normally you're going to want to clear and clean all of this, but you know what? There's <laughs> nothing inside. That's why it's... Uh, it's not working very well. It's uh, very dry. All right, one more piece to take off, and that's going to be the pinion gear. And again, this is not marine brass or, or any uh, stainless steel or any of that stuff that you would see on the higher priced reels. You're basically seeing molded parts. They're not as efficient as, uh, say, CNC mach machined gearing. The uh, metals themselves are not as durable, but there's no reason to say that that can't uh, last and fish for a long time to come. Well, here's what I was saying about being dry. I mean, the only grease on there, which is very little, is just uh, dried out. So that's why this reel is not spinning well. And you're going to see a nice reel come out of this. This one belongs to Harry. He sent that in to me. And he's going to see a nice reel. I'm going to test this bearing. Yep, bearing's working fine. I oil the bearing, so let's go ahead and do that. And I often get asked, which uh, oils do you use? I'm not particular to uh, any brand of fishing reel oil. I use, uh, mostly I'll use Pen, I'll use Real X, and I'll use Lucas. But uh, it's generally whatever I find when, well, when the other stuff runs out. I like the pen because I can get that in uh, in bigger containers. You can buy a four ounce or more container of the oil, and I do go through a lot of it. You don't need that bigger container. All right, I'm, as you can see, I'm kind of filling this in very, <laughs> very good here. That's because this thing hasn't seen um, 
servicing in a long time. Take that bearing, put that back on. Just check, make sure that that cavity is nice and clean inside. And it is. And what we have to do, you saw me struggle a little bit with that bearing coming out. I'm going to put a little bit of grease on for the next person that does this. It'll come out a little bit easier. All right, load it in, press it in. Go back and get those two screws that we took out. No better place to look for them than in your parts tray. That way you know where they are. If you have questions on this reel or any reel in particular, maybe you're working on one and you got a little problem you've come across, if you leave those questions in the email, I'll try and answer them for you. The uh, comment section is actually the best way to go. I read the comments in the morning and I do try to respond right online there. The next best way to reach me is sending me an email. The worst way to reach me is calling me. I know that the phone number is on the card that I post at the end of the videos, and I do try to answer them, but when I'm in the shop like I am now, or if I'm uh, on a computer in the morning, that, that phone is the last piece that gets answered. So I will apologize in advance, but uh, that's kind of the way that my schedule and my work habits are. All right, we've got that all buttoned up there. Go ahead and take the assembly then, put that in. And as you're putting this down, you need to get the, the circle on that hook there to go into that uh, little point on the anti-reverse. Go ahead and put a little bit of oil here where that spring and the dog are. We have one more collar here, which is the top piece now. That rides over those two studs, just like that. And then we can go ahead and uh, grab the rotor and make sure that's clean underneath. And again, this one's really dry. We can put a little bit of oil onto the swing arm here. That swing arm is going to work against this ramp here. You can see how this case ramps up. And uh, that's going to push that bail assembly kick arm up and it's going to trip your bail. All right. And I'm going to dirt on the inside of this. There's a lot of dirt. I, I'm guessing this reel was probably in storage for some time. And uh, don't know it all. I'll have to get a little bit more from Harry. He said this is as found. So what happens a lot of times is somebody takes up the hobby of fishing they uh, have an, an enjoyment for quite some time with it, or maybe, maybe just once. <laughs> and what they do is they go and get the, uh, sorry, the, uh, move on to something else. When they move on to something else, the pole usually winds up in a closet, in a shed, in a garage, somewhere. Uh, you can see I'm struggling because I forgot this is a reverse threaded nut. So I turn this one counterclockwise to tighten that up. You can see it's a whole lot easier to work without the axle shaft in at this point. And I'm over two. I have the wrong wrong ratchet. We'll get that done. And I like to do this before I put the other stuff on because I can spin it to make sure that I don't have any resistance in there. So we're, we're doing well there. Then I just need the tie down or hold down screw for that. And then we're going to put the rest of this reel back together again. So again, entry level reel, nothing wrong with that. will serve a lot of masters. And uh, if you're just learning how to fish, if you're, if you like to keep a reel at the cabin, or the shore house, or wherever you may have, or if you just want to keep one, uh, well, in in your place, and you're not worried about if somebody drops it overboard, this is ideal. Somebody dunks it in the ocean, somebody uh, drops it in the sand, whatever. It's a lot better alternative for a novice than maybe losing that uh, 
that expensive reel. All right, let's uh, do the rest of it again. These are clean because it's all dried up. There's only a little pot, one little pocket of grease there. When you get these, inspect all of the um, surrounds. Make sure that those teeth are nice and crisp, that there's no greases or dried debris or anything in those channels. When you uh, grease it up, I use an artist's brush. When you grease it up, you don't have to get it in every uh, little slice. I know I probably went a little bit overboard based on what I do for the top end there because, well, it hasn't seen it in a long time. I'm going to spin that just to make sure it spins nicely. That's plastic there. I'm going to put a little bit of oil just on the seam, let it work itself in there, kind of work against that case. Well, we have the um, gear is all greased up. There was a little bit of a shim, if I remember. Nope, that's not it. It must have been from another project. Uh, we're going to just put a little bit of grease onto the stud side of this. We're going to drop our cross wind block down so that it, that stud is at the bottom. Then we can reinsert the main gear mesh it with the cross wind gear. Then we're going to take the cross wind block, which is clean. All right, and put a little bit of grease into that. I'm going to load our cross wind block in. Now, if you weren't taking pictures and you got confused, it's real easy to turn that one upside down. So I always recommend that you take pictures at critical junctures so that you know how it goes when it's time to reinstall. Light coating of grease onto the axle shaft. Flat part faces you as you go to reinstall. Hold your cross line block so that you can merge the two. And then use a pick or something. Make sure that the hole in that cross line block is lined up to accept that screw. It's a small screw. Be careful with that one. And just as I said that, I just me and small screws don't get along. I try with a little bit of grease as, uh, to act as a glue as we got to put that in. We'll tighten that up. And then we'll get on with this. This bushing comes off. I want to put a little bit of grease onto the shaft. Nothing wrong with bushings. I kind of wish that they would have put the same metal uh, or brass or whatever this compound is on the other side. They put a plastic one on the other side. I guess just as well they're trying to save a nickel there. All right, and then we have the case. And you know that your crosswind block is in the right position because you have the indentation in the case where that's going to slide. Since it's going to slide in there, you can put a little bit of grease on the tracks just to make it a little bit easier for it to go up and down. Let's grab the case. I'm going to use a rod and reel cleaner with this piece off because it's easier to clean it. This one's certainly taking its share of things and knocks, but it doesn't mean you can't clean as best you can with it while you're doing it. So Jarvis Walker had um, a, a line out there called Integra that had a metal body, and I liked that one a lot. It was a relatively inexpensive one, but boy did it seem to do its, its job. I'm going to take this, I'm having a little bit of problem getting this bushing in, so I'm going to put it in from this side, then I'm going to mount the case. There we go, I heard a nice snap there. And give it a spin, make sure that your axle shaft is going up and down. And we don't have much more to do to give it a final test here. So it's interesting, I, this company's been through a lot in a short period of time, right? It went from Jarvis Walker to a pen owned company to a Bimini Products owned company to I believe it's out of business at least in the U.S. it's not being marketed anymore. For all I know, it's right back where it started from in Australia, just being a, 
a local brand. I know I have a lot of viewers down in Australia. If you can tell me what's going on with Jarvis Walker these days, I would be appreciative. Just leave it in the comment section. I'm always interested in learning more about these. But this guy's had a ride here. It's sort of like what's happened with Mitchell. Mitchell, uh, back in the 70s, went out of business and then Browning purchased it and uh, and they kind of give up, gave up the brand. I think Garcia may have even had it for a moment there. And they gave up the brand and eventually Pure Fishing purchased the brand. Bears no resemblance to the brand it was, but it's still a brand name that people recognize and uh, respond to. All right, so the click ratchet that makes the noise when you backpedal your spool is back on. The little shim washer back on. Let's put this down and see if we have a, a drag rather than a free spinning spool. Yep, we have the drag. Good. All right, we've kind of cleaned this to the best of our ability. It's got a lot of UV damage and fade on it. Nothing you can do there. Insert the shaft through. We're going to take our side plate button. It's a reversible handle if you want to Crank it with your right hand, you can do that. Set up for a left-handed crank, that's the way it came into the shop. Tighten that down. And we'll give it a test. Oh, it's certainly spinning a lot easier and nicer than it was. It's still a little noisy, that's to be expected. You can put a little bit of oil into the handle slot. And on the seam there, and I'll take care of that little chirp. And there you go, for a single ball bearing reel, this is about what you would expect. We want to make sure that we have a, uh, a bale of trips. It's tripping. So that's it. That's your Jarvis Walker Integra Power 7500. It's got a 4.1 to 1 gear ratio. It's a large salt water reel. Good catfish reel. And a single ball bearing is enough. You saw, you know, it's a value priced reel. It's uh, not one of these... Uh, uh, upper end expensive reels, but it'll catch fish nonetheless. And if you keep it maintained like we just did here, well, it's going to last for a long time to come. So I hope you've enjoyed that. To all of our first responders and essential personnel, thank you for everything it is that you do. To everyone, please stay safe, stay well, and stay watching. And good luck fishing. This is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle. Have a great day.